Hey, Attacker Painter, back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome back out to the shop. This week out in the shop, I've actually been pretty busy. Uh, not so much with orders, because I actually haven't had a whole lot of orders. But you can see behind me here, I actually have my old Delta lathe. It's on its side. It stopped working um, last Christmas. I left it running for too long on its slowest speed, so the fan also wasn't going fast enough to really cool down that engine. And so it just got super hot, and I burned up the capacitor in it. And I've been doing a lot of searching online. I had a buddy come over as a contra contractor friend of mine. You guys might remember in the past where I moved the wall of my shop back 10 feet. And uh, he came over. He got to take a look at it. We figured out what kind of a capacitor that we needed. And the voltage and the microfarad that I needed to watch out for in order to get a new capacitor. And then also the size of it. So this is the capacitor right here. It's a 330 volt uh, by 30 microfarad. And... It's not very big. It's only like two and a half inches long and then one inch in diameter. It is small. Uh, most of the uh, 330 by 30 microfarad and even the 450 by 30 microfarad are all almost reaching four and three quarter inches long and then they're usually about an inch and a half in diameter. And so that is not going to fit inside this small box right here that it goes into and then that bolts onto the outside of the engine. And so I've got to find one that is this big. But I finally found one over at the JET website. JET has a few items that take capacitors still that they still manufacture capacitors for in their replacement parts department. And I was able to find one that is about two inches by one inch in diameter. And so I'm going to pick one of those up here. Uh, come the next paycheck and I'm going to get my old lathe up and running and then I'm going to decide what I want to do with it. You know, if I want to be able to do like training uh, classes, teaching people how to turn, uh, bring them over to the shop, teach them how to turn, or if I want to just have uh, my Rikon lathe for turning larger items because it is a bigger lathe and then have my Delta for doing pens because it's it seems to be a little bit more precise as far as the tolerance is on it. Um, I love the heck out of my Rikon. It's still my favorite lathe that I got. The Delta, though, just seems to be a little bit more accurate as far as like the exact centering points on the head stock to tail stock for doing pens, which is absolutely crucial. Um, and it's a lot easier to drill on the Delta than it is on the Rikon. I did find the wiggle in the... Uh, banjo is not as much in the Delta as it is in the Rikon for whatever reason. Rikon, perfectly good tool. Absolutely love it. Not getting rid of it any day soon. Um, it's still my favorite to turn on. It sits up a little bit higher and I'm going to make risers for the Delta so I can get it to sit up a little higher that I can take out if I have somebody that's shorter that needs to turn on it. And that's the other thing. My son's wanting to get out into the shop more, and I want to get this Delta up and running because of the fact that it is shorter sitting on the countertop. It's a lot better suited for him so that he's not holding the tool up here. He can hold it a little down lower where it should be, and uh, it'll work out better for him. So I want to get that up and running, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with it afterward. So this week, like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of orders come through. I did have one order today for an Amboynia Burl Chrome Fountain Baron Pen. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. It's going to be a fun one. Love working with Amboynia. It's going to be a nice uh, Chrome Fountain Pen, so we'll get that going for them here real soon. And then uh, mostly, though, I've been doing a lot of work doing stabilizing and doing casting and also doing some prep work in order to get some stuff back in inventory. Primarily... Calico Spalted Maple Burl Blanks. I've got them back in stock. You guys can check them out on my Etsy site. I've got eight of them for just doing pen blanks out of. I've also got, uh, I think, two or three. I think I've got three for doing river table blanks out of that did not fit into the metrics that I've got for doing the pen blanks themselves. So if you want to get river table pen blanks, I've also got, I think, three of these pulled to the side for doing river table pen blanks with. But I've got regular calico spalted maple burl blanks all ready to go. They're stabilized. I've got CA finish on them. And they're beautiful. Let me just show you. Check that one out. Absolutely gorgeous. You've got nice burl eyes in there. Gorgeous calico color. Look at that 
deep black spalt lines, and they're bold lines. They are really thick. They show up really, really well. Now, the variance in the amount of spalting on here um, varies greatly. So some of them have a lot of the spalt lines. Some of them have a uh, fewer amount of the spalt lines and more burl um, or more of the natural wood burl and less of the spalting, but they are all beautiful. This one's got a lot of calico in it. And then you've got the spalting up here, calico in the middle, and then beautiful burl down here at the end. That's a gorgeous one. Here's another really good one. So this one, you can see all the burl eyes in there. Really, really pretty. And then you've got beautiful calico coloring here. Nice spalting down here. And then more of the burl figuring. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a really pretty one too. Look at the spalting you've got there on the top. Kind of bisects it. You've got spalting and then you've got beautiful calico wood there on the back side. Lovely burl. Absolutely a gorgeous piece. So I've got eight of these that are set up, ready for you guys to order. And I'm just going to pick them at random. Um, some of them, like this one here, um, has spalting that cuts right through the middle of it. Lovely calico colors, nice burling on there. Um, so they vary greatly in the amount of spalting and calico coloring. They all have spalting in them and they all have the calico difference in the colors. Um, so it's just a matter of how much. And I'm not going to be doing special requests. Um, they're just going to be kind of at random. So I've got them in a box. We order a few of them. I'll throw a few of them in there and I'll get those shipped out and they're going to be ready to go. I mean, it just takes me a few days to get them put into bags, mailer envelopes, and then get them shipped off to you. So come on by, get those ordered because they're going to go quick. Just want to show this off real quick. This is the one that I talked about last week that I was having to cast a river table blank out of the spalted maple burl. This one is in a calico. It does have just the slightest amount up here in this top, uh, but just a spalted maple burl. Really pretty. Sky blue river is what that customer wanted. Turned out beautiful. So that's going to be mailing that out here tomorrow. Along with that, I also got a whole bunch of stabilized spalted maple set up. So these aren't uh, maple burl is just stabilized spalted maple that came off of those same pieces doesn't have any of the burl sections but it, it does have a nice uh, spalting to it lots of really gorgeous black lines in there as well really nice pieces as well for the river table blanks I also got a bunch of just maple burl set up so if you guys want to get your hands on some more maple burl uh, river table blanks I've got more maple burl set up for doing river table pen blanks you guys can see those hard to see on camera because my light's so bright but they are really pretty really nice really high amount of burl eyes let me turn my light down so you can see a lot of the burl eyes in those some of them have just a tremendous amount of the burl eyes like that one does this one here too got a, just a huge amount of the burl eyes really really pretty happy with how these turned out and i've got those all set up for doing maple burl river table pen blanks Last week I talked about doing some hippie pens. My dad used to take all of his wood cut off pieces and he'd glue them together and he would do uh, what he called hippie pens. You know, it was just because he was just trying to save uh, and not waste any pieces of what he has been cutting up. And so I decided I'm going to start doing the same thing with some of my resin cut off pieces. I still have plans to do that. And actually, as soon as I'm done doing this video, I'm going to go over my bandsaw, start cutting off squares, and then I'm going to drill them out and get those glued up. And maybe I'll have those ready for you guys by next week um, so you can see what they're turning out like. So that's it for this week. Just a real short one. I say real short, but you know, it's probably longer than most of you have sat through. So if you're still here, leave me a comment section down below. Just a big thumbs up. Let me know that you guys are sticking through and watching all the way to the end. That'd be much appreciated so that I can see that you guys enjoy the content. And if you're seeing this all the way through and you don't like the content, but you still want to let me know, go ahead and leave a thumbs down in the comments. And then I'll tell me as well that, hey, you're entirely too long and you need to cut them shorter. So thanks again for joining me out here in the wood shop. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Wood Shop, signing out. Take care and happy turning.